Hello, my dear students. Welcome to another beautiful, interesting chapter of chemistry. Well, that is called chemical kinetics. So, in this chapter, we are discussing the speed of chemical reaction. But in chemistry, instead of that term speed, we are using rate. Both are same. Rate is a, a rate is a chemical term for speed. So you may have seen some of the reactions in your lab. We you know that when we are adding some of the ions and some of the reagents to a test tube, you, you will get an immediate precipitate. So that reactions are examples of fast reactions. But we also know that there are some other reactions we, are, we have seen in our common daily life like rusting. Rusting of iron articles will take months to years to complete. In the same way, fermentation, fermentation of sugar, we are producing alcohol by fermenting sugar. That will take 15 to 30 days to complete. So why some reactions are fast and why some are slow? So we are discussing the factors which are affecting the speed, not the speed, the rate of the chemical reaction. So here, let's give a definition for rate of a chemical reaction. So we know that chemical reactions are conversion of reactants to products. Maybe there is more than one reactant and more than one product. Generally, we can say that it is a rate of change of concentration of reactants or products by time. We know that when we start a chemical reaction, we have only reactants. So we can say that there is a hundred percentage of reactants only. Then these reactants are converting into products. As a result, the concentration of reactants slightly decreases. Look at this graph. You can see this red line. So here in x-axis, we are giving time and in y-axis, concentration in moles per liter. So initially, when time is zero, that's a time when we... we before we start the chemical reaction. So when time goes, we can see that the concentration of products decreases by time. At the same time, initially there is no real products. That is the concentration of product is zero initially. But during the ch time, ch change in time, there is increase in concentration of product. So we can define rate or we can calculate rate in terms of reactants or in terms of product. So what is rate? We can define like this. It is a rate of change of concentration of reactants or products by the change of time. Let us discuss the factors that that are affecting reaction rate. So we already know that a reaction may be slow, medium or fast, depends on the chemical nature and the type of bonds in them. So first factor is the nature of the reactants. So whether they are in solid, liquid, gaseous state and the nature of bonds present in them like ionic, covalent or like complex covalent bonds. All these will affect the reaction rate. The second factor is the concentration of reactants. So we know that all chemical reactions are taken place by collisions. If you are not familiar with that theory, we'll discuss that theory later. So when more molecules or more concentration means there will be more collisions. That is 
that means the rate of reaction increases with increase in concentration of reactant if you if we have one kilogram of a reactant and two kilogram of reactant the same reactant same conditions the reactant which contain more amount of the react rea reaction will take place more faster another factor is temperature so for all chemical reactions to begin it requires uh, some minimum amount of energy so when we increase the temperature more molecules will acquire that minimum amount of energy as a result the rate of reaction increases whether they are endothermic or exothermic both the reactions will increase the rate with the temperature another factor is catalyst so we all know that catalysts are foreign substance that will increase the speed of reactions without undergo any physical change so when we add a catalyst to a reaction the reaction rate will increase but we cannot add any catalyst to any reaction because catalysts are specific for a particular reaction we need a particular catalyst then only they will change the rate of the reaction another factor is surface area of reactants so surface area of reactants can be discussed only in the case of solid reactant in the case of solid if you are using uh, one a, one block of solid and a powdered amount of solid we know that the powdered one will have more surface area so when surface area increases the reaction rate increases then another factor is addition of inert gas but in here the reaction rate is not affected by the addition of inert gas now let's see how can we calculate a reaction rate as we already learned rate of a chemical reaction is measured by either by decrease in concentration of reactant or by increase in concentration of product by time so we can write an equation rate is equal to change in concentration of species species means either reactant or product divided by the time taken for that change so let us take let's write an equation uh, for example reaction r reactant r giving product p let r1 is initial concentration of reactant and r2 is the final concentration of reactant p1 is the initial concentration of product p2 is the final concentration of product and the time is t1 to t2 so we can write the concentration of reactant that is finally it is r2 and initially it is r1 so change in concentration is r2 minus r1 and time interval t2 minus t1 or we can write product final product minus initial product divided by t2 minus t1 so in chemical kinetics we are representing concentration using a square bracket so concentration square bracket of r means concentration of r we will read this like concentration of reactant so here r2 minus r1 that is a change in concentration of reactant so we can write change that is delta 
and concentration of reactant delta R and change in time that is delta T. That will be equal to change in concentration of product divided by change in time. But we know that R2 minus R1 will always negative because reactant is decreasing but rate is a positive quantity. So to make it positive if we write in terms of reactant we always put a negative sign. So here we can discuss the same thing again once more. Here average rate will be equal to minus delta R concentration of reactant by 10. So in average rate we are taking time as a large interval like 10 minutes, 20 minutes etc. So because of that average rate of a reaction is always constant because we are taking the average. But if you are measuring the rate at a small time interval like 0.1 second or 0 0.001 seconds etc. In that case we are representing instead of capital delta we are using small delta R by small delta T. But for writing using the convenience, we will write different, not writing small delta, we will use minus dr by dt. So this is called rate at an instant of time or it is called instantaneous rate. It is called instantaneous rate. So what is the difference between instantaneous rate and average rate? Average rate is measured at a large time interval but instantaneous rate is measured at a small time interval. Average rate is a constant but instantaneous rate varies. So we, can use, we cannot use average rate for predicting the rate of a reaction. But we can use instantaneous rate for predicting the rate of a reaction. So this is a column for use used for distinguishing average rate and instantaneous rate. It is average rate, it is a rate measured at a large time intervals like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, etc. Instantaneous rate is measured at a very small time intervals like seconds or fraction of seconds. Average rate, we, hence we are measuring the large time and it is almost the same or we can say that it is a constant at the constant temperature. It, instantaneous rate, it varies with time. Hence, average rate is used, it cannot be used to predict the rate of a reaction. Average rate is represented like delta and here it is represented by dr by dt. So here we are going to discuss how can we calculate the instantaneous rate and average rate from a graph. So here that is a graph in which time is plotted on x axis and Concentration of reactants is plotted on y-axis. So during the change of time, we know that the concentration is like is decreases. We will get a curve. We will get a curve like this. So this is the curve we are getting. So when we measure the slope, what is the slope of a line? So initially the equation for calculating the slope is y2 minus y1 that is a final y value and initial y value divided by x2 minus x1 at any point. So if we take a large time interval like this, 
this is t1 and this is t2 and at that time this is the concentration of r2 and this is concentration of r1 so we can calculate the average rate by taking the difference from the graph we will get the value from the graph r2 minus r1 by t2 minus t1 instantaneous rate also we can measure that we i draw in blue line so here the small time interval and small value of r1 and r2 will get from that we can calculate instantaneous rate also so this is all this also the same thing but the difference is here uh, here we are using uh, instead of reactants we we took products on the y axis so the graph will be the opposite that of the other one the other graph is like this it is decreasing and here it is increasing here also we can use the same approach like uh, we can calculate average rate sorry with this product p2 minus p1 divided by t2 minus and small time interval we can find instantaneous rate then what is the unit of rate constant so we know that rate is equal to concentration divided by time so unit of rate depends on the unit of concentration and time usually we are taking concentration in mole per liter and time in seconds or in minutes you can use both so the unit of rate will be mole liter raised to minus 1 we are taking the second upper we will get mole liter raised to minus 1 second raised to minus 1 but this we can use only in the case of uh, liquid or solid reactants but in the case of gaseous reactants we know that concentration is expressed in terms of pressure so you need to pressure we are taking atm so in that case we'll get atm divided by seconds or we can write atm atm means atmosphere not auto teller machine automatic teller machine second raised to minus 1 so in the case of gases we can use this so here we will do a simple question the question is write the average rate and instantaneous rate for the following reaction the reaction is given 4 ph3 giving p4 gas plus 6 h2 gas so here there is only one reactant and two products so how can we write the average reaction rate let's see average reaction rate is equal to change in concentration of reactant by change in time here we have phosphine as a reactant then one more thing we have to take in care of is the stoichiometric coefficient we have to write always the variation in one more so if there is a number you need to divide with that number so we can write minus because it's a reactant and there is a stoichiometric coefficient 4 so divide with that so we'll get 1 by 4 we'll get 1 mole and change in concentration of instead of r we can write the name of that reactant ph3 it is phosphine divided by delta t that will be also equal to product product there is only one mole so no, no, no need to write or divide with any number but it is product so it is positive change in concentration of p4 divided by delta t that will be equal to next one more product but there is six moles so we need to divide by six one by six into change in concentration of hydrogen divided by change in time so you can use 
either of this equation to calculate the rate. Then when we write instantaneous rate, when we write instantaneous rate, the only difference that we need to use small d instead of delta. On pH 3, concentration of pH 3 divided by dt, which will be equal to, sorry, change in concentration of phosphorus divided by dt, which will be equal to 1 by 6 d of hydrogen divided by dt. So, this is the answer for the question. Let's go to the next slide. We'll do another question. Here, for the reaction R giving P, the concentration of reactant changes from 0 0.03 molar to 0 0.02 molar in 25 minutes. Calculate the average rate of the reaction both in minutes and in seconds. So let's do average rate is equal to here it is concentration of R minus delta R by delta T. Delta R means minus R2 minus R1 divided by delta T. R2 it is final time is 0 0.02 minute uh, molar minus 0 0.03 molar. Time change is 25 minutes. So we will get this will be negative, negative into negative will get positive. We will get positive 0, 0,1 divided by 25 minute. When we divide, we will get 4 into 10 tries to minus 4 molar or mole. It raised to minus 1, minute raised to minus 1. Let me do check the calculation to 100, 101, 2. Yeah, maybe correct. Then next we need to convert this minute into seconds. So we will get 0 0.01 divided by 25 minute. 1 minute is 60 seconds. So 25 into 60 will get 6.66 into 10 rise to minus 6 more liter raised to minute raised to minus 1. So you need to check the calculation with the calculator once again. So another question, in a reaction 2A giving products, the concentration is decreases from 0.5 to 0.4 in 10 minutes, calculate the rate. So here, there is only one difference because there is a stoichiometric coefficient. So we need to divide with that into delta of A by delta T. So final concentration is 0 0.4, 0 0.4 minus 0 0.5 and that is a minus sign and that is 1 by 2 unit is small liter raised to minus 1 divided by time is 10 minute. So we will get minus, minus into minus plus we will get 0.1 divided by 20. So we get 
can write like this. I don't have a calculator, so I can write 100, 1, 2, 3. And by 20 into 10 raised to 3. And 25. So 5 into 10 raised to minus 3. The unit is small. Delta raised to minus 1, and it is in minutes, so we need to write. Minute raised to minus one. So here we are discussing the concentration, effect of concentration on the reaction rate. That is called rate law. According to rate law, rate of a reaction will increase with increasing concentration of reactants. That is, rate is directly proportional to concentration of reactant. There is more reactant, that reaction will be faster than the other one. So we can say that we discuss a fact that a rate law is defined as at a given temperature, rate of a reaction is directly proportional to concentration of reaction. So consider a reaction A giving B, rate will be directly proportional to A. Or we can write rate will be, we are avoiding the proportionality constant using a unit constant called K into concentration on, in terms of R, R or A, any, any, anything you can write. Where K is called, K is called rate constant. Rate constant will be a constant for a particular reaction at constant temperature. So what is rate law? We will discuss once again. At a given temperature, rate of a reaction is directly proportional to a concentration of reactants. Or we can write rate is equal to a constant, a proportionality constant. We are using K into R, where K is called rate constant. So here we are uh, uh, required to write a rate law expression or rate equation for a reaction. So here we are writing a reaction A moles of A react with B moles of B giving C moles of C plus D moles of D. Where A, B, C and D are stoichiometric coefficients like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So according to rate law, rate is directly proportional to concentration of reactants and if there is any stoichiometric coefficient we need to write it as a power then one more thing this power is not equal to this so we can write either another number x may or may not be equal to a it is an experimental quantity so there are two reactants, so we need to multiply the concentration of reactants A and B raised to B raised to Y. So this is the rate law for this reaction. So we can avoid the proportionality constant by using K. Right? Where X and Y are an experimental quantity. So next we are discussing order of a reaction. So that may be the new term for you. So here we are discussing a new term called order. So when we write a chemical reaction according to rate law, we are raising reactants using some powers. That powers we can obtain only by experimental work. By seeing an equation we cannot write that power. So when we got a rate law, the sum of these powers are called odd. If x plus y is equal to 1, we will call it is a first order reaction. If it is 0, we will call it a zero order. Or if it is a fraction, we will call it like that. So order may be 0, whole numbers, 
or fractions can be determined only experimentally. So by seeing a reaction, for example, 2A giving product, we cannot say it is a second order reaction. That can be determined only experimentally. So that's wrong. So we will do a question for calculating order of a reaction. So if the rate law or rate expression is given, first one, rate is equal to K into A raised to 1 by 2, B raised to 3 by 2. We need to calculate the order. So we know that order will be equal to the sum of the powers of concentration terms raised in rate law. So here the power of A is 1 by 2 and power of B is 3 by 2. So we'll get 4 by 2 and x2 so it is a second order reaction the second one it is uh, order will be calculated by using the power of a is 3 by 2 and power of a, b is minus 1 so we'll get 3 minus 1 by 2 3 minus 2 by 2 equal to 1 by 2. We are taking a common denominator. We need to multiply this with 2. So that is a half order reaction. So here we have a question. In the following reaction, CCO, COCl, that is cobalt chloride bond is Replaced by CO H bond. The reaction is given. Initial rate expressed like this. And here the value of the power is not given. We have given a value, channel value M. Using the data below, find the value of M in the rate expression and calculate the value of K. So we need to find the order first. Then after that we need to find the value of k so here given concentration different concentrations are given at different and different rates are also given so that will be easy don't get confused with the big question so we need to do one thing consider this as the first equation and this as the second equation divide the second uh, equation by equation one I will do in another page. So we will do rate is equal to K into concentration of that reactant that is CO, CL something raised to M. So the first expression is we can write we have the rate is uh, there are two equations we will write equation 2 equation 2 is right what is the rate for the equation 2 that is 2.6 into 10 raised to minus 7 into k by concentration let me write we can write r that will be easy raised to m so we know that 2.6 into 10 raised to minus 7 k into what is the concentration Second equation 2.10 to 10 raised to minus 3 raised to m. This is the equation 2. And equation 1 is 1.3 into 10 raised to minus 7 equal to k into concentration is 1 into 10 raised to minus 3 raised to m. So this is equation 1. Then we'll divide equation 2 by equation 1. We'll get, that we will get, we are dividing here. So we'll get 1.3, 10.77 cancel. I'll take another color. This will cancel. And this will cancel and we'll get a 2. Will be equal to K and K will cancel. And here 2 
1 by 2 by 1 is 2. This will cancel. So it is 2 raised to m. So 2 raised to m is equal to what is the power here? 1. So m will be equal to 1. So that is a first order reaction. So we got the first part and second part we can calculate the rate constant using any one of this equation that is rate constant k will be equal to concentration we can take the first one 2.6 into 10 raised to minus 7 divided by 2 into 10 raised to minus 3 the whole raised to 1 then you can calculate and find the answer. So we already learned the units of rate constant, but later we found that there are different order reaction like uh, zero order, like zero order, first order, second order, etc. So how do you calculate the order? So we it is difficult to by heart all the units. So let's see how can we calculate the units of rate constant, not rate, rate constant using for different order reaction. So we have the equation k is equal to rate is equal to k into a raised to n where n is the order. So if it is zero order we can write k is equal to rate divided by concentration raised to zero. Any number raised to zero is one. So we can write rate divided by 1 will be equal to rate. What's the concentration of uh, unit of rate is mole liter raised to minus 1 and if it is second, second raised to minus 1. This is for zero order. Let's do for first order. The same equation k is equal to rate divided by concentration of A raised to 1. So will be equal to constant unit of rate will be mole liter raised to minus one second raised to minus one divided by concentration unit mole liter raised to minus one. So mole liter raised to minus one mole liter raised to minus one will be cancelled and we'll get the unit is second inverse for first order. Then what will be the for second order? Second order will be rate will be rate divided by A raised to 2. Then sorry outside. So we will get mole liter raised to minus 1 second raised to minus 1 divided by mole liter raised to minus 1 the square. So this square and this one will be cancelled and this will come up it will become negative mole raised to minus 1 and this will become positive and second minus. This is for a second order reaction. So we can make a general expression for all that is if order is n, n order can say that unit of rate constant will be equal to mole raised to 1 minus n liter raised to n minus 1 second raised to minus 1. So you, using this you can calculate the unit for any order reaction where n is the order. So when we substitute the value, we will get all these equations. Next question, identify the reaction order from each of the following rate constants. So there are two questions given. For the first question, k is 
2.3 into 10 raised to minus 5 liter mole raised to minus 1 second minus 1. So we need to find the order of the reaction by looking the units. So for the first question unit is mole raised to minus 1 liter second raised to minus 1 and for the second question it is second raised to minus 1. So we know that this unit is for second order and this is for first order. So for finding the unit you already learn if n is the order it will be mole 1 minus n liter n minus 1 second raised to minus 1. So if it is second order 2 minus 1 so 1 minus 1 here it is 2 minus 1 1 and it is second so for second order we will get mole raised to minus 1 liter second inverse then for first order mole raised to 1 minus 1 that is 0 then liter raised to 1 minus 1 that is also 0 then remaining only second inverse so it is a first order reaction we'll move on the next so let's see the differential form of rate equation so here i considered an example for a first order reaction so for a reaction giving first order reaction giving r giving product so we can express a rate in two different ways one as per rate law and the second one the general expression like average rate so according to rate law we know that rate is directly proportional to concentration of reactant or we can write rate is equal to a proportionality constant into r then according to the average rate or instantaneous rate we can write the differential rate so it is uh, instantaneous minus dr by dt so both the equation the left hand side is rate so we can equate the equation right hand side so equating one and two will get minus dr by dt is equal to k into r and we are rearranging this to make the same term on the same side. We will get minus dr by r in equal to kdt. That we can again change. Minus dr by dr is equal to minus, we are moving the minus to the constant kdt. So this is for first order. So we are going to find the integrated rate equation for first order reaction. So consider first order reaction R giving product where R is a reactant and P is the product. So we can express the rate in two different ways. According to rate law, according to rate law, R is equal to or rate is equal to K into concentration of R raised to 1. one because it is a first order reaction. We can give it is equation, it is equation 1. Then we can also express rate as a differential equation that is instantaneous rate that is minus dr by dt. This is equation 2. So both are left hand sides are same so we can equate equation 1 and 2. So what we will get? We will get minus dr by dt will be equal to k into r. 
then we are exchanging to make the similar terms on the same side so we'll get minus dr by r r is a concentration is equal to k t t and we are exchange placing the negative sign here so we'll get this then we are integrating this equation on integrating this k is a constant so we can put the sign like this we know that integral of 1 by x dx will be equal to ln x that is a natural log of x and integral of dx will be equal to x so on integrating we'll get integral of dr by r that is 1 by x by dx is ln x so dr by r will be equal to ln r minus k into dt dx is x so dt will be t then for all integration finally we need to add a constant of integration so this is equation number 3 then we have to find the value of this constant for that we are assuming a condition that is when t is equal to zero that is when temperature t is sorry not temperature time t is equal to zero that is before the reaction what will be the concentration of r it will be the initial concentration we are representing the initial concentration by r zero that zero represent initial that is before the reaction start so when we substitute these values in the above equation, we'll get ln r instead of r we are giving r zero minus k k into zero that will become zero plus i. So this term will become zero and we'll get the value of i. I is equal to ln r r zero. So we are substituting this value of i in equation three. So, on substituting I, we will get ln R is equal to minus KT plus instead of I, we are giving ln R0. So, we are rearranging this, we will get KT ln R0. This, when it comes here, it will become negative ln R. Then we know that log A minus log B will be equal to log A by B. So this is A minus B. So we can write KT will be equal to ln R0 by R. So for making calculation easier, we can convert natural log into mathematical log by multiplying the other one with the this then we'll get kt will be equal to 2.303 log r0 by r or when we shift t here we'll get a is equal to 2.303 divided by t log r0 by r. This is the integrated, sorry, integrated equation for first term. So for first order, we got the integrated equation that is k is equal to 2.303 divided by t log r0 by r. So here k is rate constant. T time 
R0 initial concentration, that is a concentration when time is zero. And R is concentration of reactant after time t. So this is for first order. Next we are going to zero order. So consider a reaction I am giving P. You can write the rate in two different ways. Rate is equal to K into here it is a first order reaction, so R zero order reaction, so R is to zero. Then we know that any number raised to zero will be equal to one. So here we'll get rate is equal to k. Then can give this is equation one. The other way we can write rate is equal to minus dr by dt. This is equation 2. So on equating both the equations, we will get minus dr by dt is equal to k. So on integrating this, will get what is what so we need to rearrange before that so minus dr we will take this minus sign here integral of dr minus k into integral of dt i put took this dt here so what is integral of dx we already know that that is x so we are going to find the value of k from the graph. So this is the graph we obtain when we plot log r, log r on y-axis and t on x-axis. So we know that for a equation for a straight line, it is equal to y is equal to mx plus c where y and x are variables, m is the slope, and c is y-intercept, that is the value of y when x is equal to 0. So in this equation here, l and r and t are variables. So this is y and this is x and Minus k is the slope and L and R zero value we can get from the y-intercept. So when we plot, we got a graph here. So this is time t equal to zero. So that is, this value is called concentration of R zero. So this is a line with negative slope. So, we'll get a negative slope here from the slope. How can you find the slope of a line? Consider any, any two points. So, from this we will get two values of log concentration and here so um, general equation for slope will be equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 so using the same here at the two time we'll get the two time to concentration and from that we'll get slope slope will be equal to minus k
So we can we can draw one more graph using the equation of first order that is uh, what is that k is equal to 2.303 by t log r0 by r that is final equation i'll rearrange this and we'll get log r0 by r is equal to kt by 2.303 so this is also in the form of a line, straight line, that is y, m, x, but there is no c, c, 0. So here, this we have to plot on y axis, and we need to plot this on x axis, and we will get a slope. So when we plot log r0 by r, divided by, sorry, here it is t, then we'll get a line like this. The slope of this line, slope of this line will be equal to k by 2.303. So using this, we can easily find the slope of the line. So for zero order also we can do the same. We can draw two graphs. For the first graph, we need to take the first reaction that is R is equal to minus KT plus R zero. This is Y equal to M X plus C. So Y is R, X is T, and we'll get a line like this. And this is R0. And the slope of this line will be equal to minus K. And we can also draw one more graph. Like um, like this. We need to take R0 minus R. And let me see the equation. So when we are rearranging, we will get kt will be equal to r0 minus r. We will write like this. r0 minus r will be equal to kt. So this is our y and mx. There is no c. C is 0. So when we plot, plot, we'll get a graph like this. And for this line, the slope will be equal to K. This is a negative slope because it is going down. And here it is a positive slope we'll get that is going up. So we are putting T against R0 minus R. So same way we can draw the graph for second order also if you want. So this is for first order. Then uh, this is for, uh, sorry, this is for zero order. This is for first order. Uh, here I wrote A0, both are same. A0 and A R0, both are same. Okay. So when if we ask to write the right expression, we need to write like this. Right T is equal to K for zero order. Right is equal to K into concentration of R for first order or A. Right is equal to K into R raised to 1 for R raised to 2 for second order like that. So these are the graph we obtained for 0, first and second order. For 0 order we are taking concentration of R against T will get a line this. Here log A against T and here it is 1 by not A. Uh, we can write R. I'm just confused between all this. You can write both, both, are same, both are letters against T. 
so these two have negative slope because they are going down and this have a positive slope and of say pi intercept so next we are going to do a problem initial concentration of n2o5 in the first order reaction is 1.24 in the 10 raised to minus 2 liter raised to minus 1 at the 3 one the concentration of n2o5 after 60 minute to ask this then calculate the uh, right constant so we need to look whether it is first order second order so it's a first order so we know that for a first order reaction the equation is k is equal to 2.303 by t log r0 by r then what are the things given initial concentration is given that is r0 equal to 1.24 into 10 raised to minus 2 more it raised to minus 1 then after 60 minutes so time is 60 minute then con uh, after 60 minute that is after 60 minute the concentration that is r is equal to 0 0.20 into 10 raised to minus 2 more liter raised to minus 1 so we have this we have this and we have this so we can calculate substitute so k equal to 2.303 by you can convert into second or you can do like as such no problem log 1.24 into 10 raised to minus 2 divided by 0 0.20 into 10 raised to minus 2. So you can simply calculate this and you will get k is equal to 3. 0, 4 into 10 raised to minus 2 as the final answer. Next, we are discussing half life of a reaction. Half life means if you have 100 moles of reactant, the time taken to complete 100 moles to 50 moles, that is just half that time is called half-life and it is represented by t half. So half-life of a reaction is the time in which the concentration of reactant is reduced to one half of its initial concentration. It is represented as t half. So from the general equation, we can calculate the half-life equation for all. That is uh, for zero order, we are writing So when, when time t is equal to t half, the r will be equal to r zero by two because in centrage, in half of the initial concentration. So when we give this, we can give instead of r, we can give r zero by two minus k into t half plus r0. On solving this, we will get t half will be equal to r0 by 2k and for first order, we will get t half is equal to 0.693k and for second order, we will get 1 by r0k. The one thing we need to notify, notice that for first order, the t half does not depends on the initial concentration but for zero order and second order both are depends on r0 the t half depends on r0 but first order does not depends on initial concentration that means if it is a first order reaction the time taken to become 100 mole to 50 mole and 1000 moles to 500 mole 
will be same if it is 10 minutes and this will be also 10 minutes in the case of first hour up because it does not depends on the initial concentration sometimes uh, you will ask a question like that why it is so you need to prove this so we are going to do a question when first order reaction is found to have a rate constant is given find the half life that is easy for first order reaction t half is equal to 0 0.0693 divided by k so we can substitute the value of k we will get 693 divided by k that is 5.5 .5 into 10 raised to minus 14 second inverse and we will get when solving, we'll get 1.26 into 10 raised to 13, and here it is unit in second inverse, so that is second. So our answer is this. So another question: Show that in a first order reaction, the time required for the completion of 99 percentage of percentage is 10 times of the half life of the reaction when the reaction is completed 99%. So we know that for uh, first order T half is equal to 0 0.693 by K, let it be there. Then we can find the T half at, uh, time for 99%. So the equation we are using is K equal to 2.303 divided by T log R0 by R. So for in this questions, we have can use R0 is 100 percentage, that is initial concentration, and 99 percentage is completed. So, what will be R? 100 minus 0.99. So, what we will get? We will get 0.1 percentage is remaining. So we are substituting these values. So we can switch T here with T equal to K 2.303. We don't know the value of K. So we are just substituting like log 100 by 0 0.1. 100 by 0 0.100 we can try 10 raised to 0 0.1 is 10 raised to minus 1. So when you need to go up, we will get uh, 10 raised to 3. 10 raised to 3 is 1000. So log of 1000 is 3. So we'll get 2.3 no 3 into 3.000 divided by k is equal to 6, 9, 0, 9k. So this is the t for 10 for 99%. So what is okay, when we compare this? What is the difference between these two? So when we multiply this t half by 10, we will get 6, 9, 6.93 by k. So these two are same. So we can prove First order at the time record for the completion and service is this. Pseudo order reaction. So, uh, some of the reactions like this, that is, when concentration of one of the, this is esterification we can take 10 mole of ester react with oh sorry 0 1 mole of ester react with 10 mole we'll get 
acid and alcohol. So in this reaction, when reaction is completed, only uh, 0.1 mole of uh, water is reacting and other reactant that is 9.99 moles uh, of uh, water is still unreacted. So in that case, the rate depends on only the concentration of this. Or we can write rate is equal to K dash into C A concentration of reactant, but H2O is a constant. So we can write replace with another constant. So K will be equal to K dash into water. So this reaction we are expecting a higher order, but it is a first order reaction. That type of reactions are called pseudo order reactions. So we are going to do another question. You can read the question. So hydrolysis, hydrolysis of methyl acetate is given. This is at a zero minute, the concentration 30 minute, 60 minute like this. Then you need to show that it is a pseudo first order reaction. Concentration of water is given. So first we need to find the K, K dash and shows that should be a constant. We go to the next page for doing the answers. So pseudo first order reaction we can write K equal to 2.303 by T log R0 by R where k is equal to k dash into concentration of water. So we need to find the k using any of the values given. Then we can get, we'll do that 30 minutes. So we'll get 2.303 by 30 log r0 by r. And we'll get the answer is 2.004 into 10 raised to minus 3. So we need to find the values in other time also. That is 2.303 by 60. And uh, then for the other time also 90, 30, next to 30, next to that. Like that, we'll get the same answer for all. Since the value of K is a constant for all the concentrations, so we can say that it is a pseudo first order reaction. So the value of K is 2.004 into 10 raised to minus 3 will get the average value. So substitute that value here, so we'll get K dash. K dash will be equal to K by concentration of water. K is 2.004 into 10 raised to minus 3 divided by concentration of water is given. It is 55 more. So from that, um, we'll get the answer 3.64 into 10 raised to minus 5. So that is the value of rate constant. So next factor, we are discussing the factor temperature. So we know that when temperature increases, reaction rate considerably increases. That is, uh, by the decrease, the increase in temperature of 10, the rate constant is nearly doubled. So reason is that for all the chemical reaction, it requires a minimum energy to take part in a chemical reaction. So when we increase the temperature, uh, the minimum energy or the energy processed by the molecule increases as the result reaction rate increases. We'll explain with the graph on next. Next. So that relation is given by Arrhenius, by Arrhenius and it is called Arrhenius equation. According to Arrhenius, K is equal to, that's the relation between rate constant and temperature. K is equal to A into E raised to, that is exponential minus A by RT. There, 
A is the Arrhenius constant, R universal gas constant, E is the activation energy, and T temperature. So this is a graph showing the energy of molecules at different temperature. So from the first graph, you can see at the T1 temperature, may I take another color, at uh, T1 temperature, this is the minimum energy or the activation energy required for particular chemical reaction. So in T1 temperature, let it be 300 Kelvin. At T1 temperature, only this much molecules can undergo chemical reaction. But when we increase the temperature, that is by 10 degrees Celsius, by 310 Kelvin, so the number of molecules that process the activation energy. So our graph flattens. That means the most probable energy processed by the molecules, the number of molecules increases by twice. So here you can, you can see the number of molecules which is increased almost twice. So as a result, rate doubles. So this is a normal reaction path. Consider reaction A plus B react giving product. Let me take uh, green color. So this is the energy processed by the reactants. And you can see the reaction path. After first, the reactants collide and form a transition state. It is called activated complex. So energy difference between activated complex and the reactant is called activation energy. So usually, if activation energy is high, that reaction will be slow because they need to jump this much height. But if activation energy is low, the reaction will be fast. And this is an exothermic reaction because the energy of product is lesser than that of reactants. And this is an amount of energy exit out. So this is a usual reaction coordinate or reaction path. So we are going to write um, Arrhenius equation at two different temperature, that is T1 and T2. So we know that when temperature changes, like constants also changes K1 to K2. So this is our Arrhenius equation. First, we are taking the log. When we take log of K, we will get ln K. And uh, log of A is log of A plus then log of E raised to X will be equal to X. So log of E raised to minus EA by RT will be equal to minus EA by RT. That's why we got like this. Then we are applying the condition. We'll get two equations, one and two. Then we are minusing two, one from two. Then we'll get on the left hand side log K2 minus log K1 will be equal to A and A will be cancelled. Then minus E A by R T2 minus of minus plus. That is E A by R T1. Log A minus B, we already know that that is log A by B. Will be equal, we can take E A by R is a constant, we will take outside, then we will get 1 by T1 minus 1 by T2. Or we can rearrange ln A2 by K1 will be equal to E A by R T2 minus T1 divided by T1, T2. So this is a relation for a constant at two different temperatures. So we'll do another question. The first order right constant for the reaction given. 
So that is 600. So we can write temperature. Mm -hmm. Temperature T1 is equal to 600 Kelvin. And the rate constant at that temperature is K1 is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 5 second inverse. And activation energy is given that is Ea, it is 29 kilojoule. It is given in kilojoule, so we need to convert that unit into joule by multiplying with the 10 raised to 3 because we are using the value of R in joule per mole. Not minus 3, sorry, plus 3. Then uh, T2 is given. T2 is equal to 700 Kelvin. Maybe we need to find the rate constant K2. Yes. So we need the Arrhenius equation for two different temperatures. So we need to find K2. So we can write like this. That would be C log K2 minus K1 will be equal to Ea by 2.303R uh, 1 by T1 minus T2 Anyway, T2 minus T1 divided by T1, T2. Subbing all these values and putting this one here. So we can write, we are putting that 5 plus. Log K1 log 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 5 into Ea 209 into 10 raised to 3 plus 3 hmm. divided by 2.303 into 2 the value of R 8.314 joule per Kelvin per mole into temperatures you have to write T2 minus 700 so 100 divided by 600 into 700. Tum, tum. So that is 42, 1 by 42,000. So we'll get log K2 is equal to minus 2.303. So when we take the anti log, we'll get A2 is equal to 6.36 into 10 tries to minus 3 in second inverse. That's it. Next, we are discussing the effect of catalyst. Effect of catalyst in uh, reaction rate. So sometimes you may be confused with the term inhibitors. So in inhibitors are not catalyst. They will decrease the speed of reaction. Catalyst will increase the speed of reaction. So we know that for all chemical reaction to proceed, they need to cross a high activation energy. So catalyst actually doing to allow the reaction to progress in a new path with a low activation energy. Or we can say that catalyst is actually doing, they are decreasing the activation energy. As a result, there will be a high increase in the reaction rate. So we know that... Um, Enzymes are biological catalysts. Enzymes are bi biological catalysts. So for uh, digesting our food, we need uh, digesting enzymes. So without this enzyme, 
it may take 100 years to come uh, digest a single meal so from that you can understand how much effective is a catalyst to increasing the rate of a reaction but the catalysts are specific for a particular reaction to catalyst it rates a, it needs a particular catalyst for example for catalyzing potassium chloride decomposition it needs mno2 as a catalyst so here look at the graph this is the normal path of reaction with a very high activation energy so when we add catalyst it will decrease the activation energy and proceed a new path and increase the speed of reaction. So catalysts are substance, they are foreign substance, they won't undergo any chemical, chemical change during a reaction but they may be physical change. Sometimes it may change just into solid to liquid or block to powder any same physical change may happen but they won't undergo any chemical change they are foreign substance they will not involve in chemical reaction but they will only alter the speed of a chemical reaction so this is a graph showing how the catalyst decrease the activation energy so when we used uh, a reaction without the catalyst so only this is the activation energy so only this much molecule can undergo reaction but catalyst reduce the activation energy for example this is 100 joule to uh, 50 joule or uh, 80 joule so the number of molecules which possess the activation energy increases as a result the reaction rate increases so now we are discussing the collision theory of chemical reactions it is developed by two scientists that is Max Truss and William Lewis. So according to them, for a chemical reaction to occur, there are two conditions. The first condition, they should process a minimum energy. Second condition, they must uh, collide in a proper orientation so that collisions are called effective collisions for example if you have 100 molecule of reactants among them 80 are having minimum energy they are qualified for the energy barrier then among them only 60 molecules undergo effective collisions only that are converted into products so we will get only 60 products so to happen a chemical reaction, molecules with minimum energy will collide in a proper orientation to form products. Uh, for example, uh, we'll take iodine. Iodine react with the hydrogen to form hydrogen iodide. So I'll draw the structure. This is hydrogen. H2, two atoms. Plus iodine. Iodine is little bigger than, it is not little, much bigger than hydrogen. This is iodine. So they, they can collide in different direction like, they may collide like this. They are, can go like this or they can collide like this. So the effective collisions are, this is called effective collisions. So after this effective collision, there is a transition state is formed. There is a weak force between this, this, this. That is called transition state. So 
so only effective collisions are result in transition state and they are decomposed to products so we will get to two products so we will get the hydrogen iodide so this is collision theory so in which molecules collide with a sufficient energy and that minimum energy barrier is called threshold energy and they should collide in a proper in orientation so as to facilitate the bond break so in these two cases we can see uh, the bond breaking is not easily possible but in this case they are directly colliding to break this bond so this one result in uh, or we can say this is an example for effective collision thank you all for this patience to watch all this video i'll try to prepare malayalam transition for this video if you want if anyone wants malayalam explanation uh, i will make that also if you want just comment below my video and if some of you may need more about this chapter like uh, entrance questions and we know that there are some questions uh, from uh, not from ncert syllabus we need to discuss to understand more about the problem so if you are okay if you understand all this concept just comment me below this video i will prepare another video for advanced questions of chemical kinetics thank you